And a shaman is the holy man in a culture that is still hunting. It isn't settled, it isn't agrarian. There is a very strong and important difference between a shaman and a priest. A priest receives his ordination from his superiors. He receives something from a tradition which is handed down. A shaman doesn't. He receives his enlightenment by going off into the forest by himself to be completely alert. A shaman is a man, in other words, who has undergone solitary. He's gone away into the forest to find out who he really is because it's very difficult find that out while you're with other people. The reason is that other people are busy all the time telling you who you are. In many, many ways. By the laws they impose on you, by the behavior ruts they set on you, by the things they tell you, by the fact that they always call you by your name, and by the fact that when you live among people you have to be in a state of ceaseless travel. But if you want to find out who you are before your father and mother conceived you, who you really are, you almost have to go off by yourself. Go into the forest and stop talking, even stop thinking words, and be absolutely alone. Listen to the great silences. And then, if you're lucky, you recover from the illusion that you're just little me, the so-and-so, and you attain the state of nirvana, which means the blown out state, the relieved state, the sigh of relief. Nirvana may be translated into English as phew. I've at last discovered that I don't have to survive. I can survive, of course, but I don't really have to. Because you discover, you see, that what you really are doesn't have to survive. Because it's what there is. The real you is it or that tamasi, that art thou, the Hindus say. So then, in the normal life of India, which is not a hunting culture, but a settled culture, there are priests, but there is something beyond the priest. That is to say, when a man or woman has fulfilled his or her life in the world of society, it's the normal thing to do for a person to quit their status in society and become what's called a forest dweller. That is almost, you see, to go back to the hunting culture. They divide people into two classes, Grihasta, which means householder, and Vanaprasta, which means forest dweller. And the older people all hand over their occupations and positions to their children and enter the stage of Vanaprastha or become a shamana and go outside the stockade. I'm speaking metaphorically. They sometimes do actually, they sometimes don't. And become a nobody.
They give up their name. That is to say, the label which designates who they are in terms of caste or class. They become unclassified people. That's why, strictly speaking, you see, Hinduism and Buddhism are not religions. You can classify the religions. You can say, what's your denomination? Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Quaker, etc., 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 you see. But strictly speaking, a Vanaprastha, a Shamana, has no label. He is an unlabeled body. BC. The Hindu system had become somewhat uh, decadent. It isn't altogether clear what had happened to it, but it is certain that it did seem in some way to be in need of reform. And so there, there were many reasons for this. And the Buddha, as a young man, being basically troubled by the great problems that we're all troubled with, the problem of suffering, and the problem of what all this universe is about, he endeavored to follow the methods that were then being used by people who were shamanas or vanaprastas, forest dwellers, and at that time, it's very apparent that the main method that these people were using was an aesthetic discipline. Starvation, uh, very arduous meditation practices, uh, probably self-flagellation and things of that kind. And it's said that for seven years he practiced these austerities. But he found out that they didn't lead to liberation. And all the people who were practicing them knew they didn't either. But they, they felt that that was only because they weren't doing it hard enough. of that time. And it's said that for seven years he practiced these austerities. But he found out that they didn't lead to liberation.